So it's the second lecture of the mini course on Hessians and the left sets properties. And today I'm gonna talk about Artinian Gorenstein algebras and the left sets properties. I'll recall basic results and definitions about uh, standard graded Artinian and Gorenstein algebras and the left sets properties. The main reference are these, the chapter seven of Russo's book, Mayan Watanabe paper, and a book about left sets properties, which is the more complete account on the subject. Let me just start with some motivation. Um, in several categories, there is a homology functor and assuming that the homology is commutative, uh, the target of the functor is algebras, Artinian algebras by the vanishing of the homology, satisfying point Cahe duality. And as we'll see, some uh, these algebra, these algebras are precisely the Artinian Gorenstein algebras. Left sets properties are algebraic abstractions introduced by Stanley and inspired by the hard left set theorem on the cohomology of smooth complex projective varieties. There are similar results in lots of categories. Orientable real, orientable manifolds, projective varieties, scalar manifolds, convex polytops, coxeter groups, tropical varieties. Matroids are examples of categories for which the ring of cohomology are Artinian Gorenstein algebras. But we are more interested in um, the pure algebraic version. So we are we are going to consider an Artinian graded ring. So it is. a notarian ring of the rule dimension zero. And it has a finite decomposition as a direct sum of finite dimension of Q vector spaces. And we, are, we will be supposing that I is generated by A1 as algebra, so it's standard graded. We will denote HI the Hilbert function, the dimension of the graded part of the degree, degree I. And we are assuming that HD is not zero. So the Hilbert function has, oops, Uh, is a finite finite vector, just like this. The spotlight is low battery, but it's okay. We are assuming that A is a standard grade Artinian algebra, K algebra. And during all the course, K stands for a field of characteristic zero, just to avoid some, some complications. We are going to consider a presentation in such a way that there is nothing in degree of the ideal. It's, uh, it's the same to, to, to say that's the minimal presentation. And by abuse of notation, sometimes I 
called the ideal Artinian and the number of variables, the code, the code dimension of A instead of the code dimension of the ideal, the irrelevant ideal of A is the sum of the graded parts of the degree greater than equals one and the so-called degree, sorry, the so-called ideal is the conductor of the irrelevant ideal in zero. We say that A is a level algebra if the so-called is concentrated in the last degree D. And we will say that the algebra is Kornstein. If it's a level algebra with one dimensional circle. In this case, we say that D is the circle degree of A. Let me start with a very easy example. A is this algebra. It's Artinian and has this the composition as a direct sum of graded parts here it's generated by one here by x y and z by abuse of notation the class of X model the ideal. I'll still call it X and the same for the other variables. And A2 is generated by YZ, XZ, XY, XYZ. And there is nothing in degree greater than e equals four in the circle is generated in degree three and is one dimensional. So A is going to The Hilbert function is the vector with the dimensions of the graded parts. One, three, three, one. So it's an Artinian Gornstein algebra. A very important problem is to understand the possible Hilbert vectors or Hilbert functions for Artinian Gorenstein algebras. If you fix D, the so-called degree of A and N, the co-dimension of A, I can consider A, G, and D, the family of all Artinian Gorstein K algebras of so called degree D in what I mentioned, N. And their Hilbert vectors naturally 
has a structure of a pole set. This pole set has a very rich structure and it, we do not know so much about this pole set in general. The question is what are the possible Hilbert functions? The maximal Hilbert function in this natural poset structure with the natural order of strings, uh, symmetric strings, as a, as a matter of fact, the maximal ones correspond to the so-called compressed algebras described by uh, Bernstein Yarobino and whose formula is just this binomial number up to the middle and then symmetrically in the other side. If the codimension is low, there is a characterization, and in particular, they are always unimodal. The, we say that a, a, a sequence of, of natural numbers is unimodal. If it is, if it increases up to a certain point, and after that it decreases. So it has no values. But if the codimension is greater than or equal to five, there are examples of non-unimodal Gorenstein Hilbert factors. In codimension four, it's an it's a open problem. So we know the maximal Hilbert functions, but we don't know the minimal ones. The first example of a non-unimodal Gorenstein Hilbert function was given by Stanley, which is one, 13, 12, 13, one. They prove, uh, Stanley proved that it's a Gorenstein vector. And uh, Migliori, Nagel, Zanello showed that in fact, it is minimal. So it's the first work in the direction of showing the minimality of some uh, Hilbert vector. It's open problem to understand the structure of both sets of the Hilbert factors, in particular, I describe the minimal ones, fixing the circle degree and the co-dimension. But in order to see that always the Hilbert function, the Hilbert vector, which is of a Gorenstein, Artinian Gorenstein algebra, is symmetric. we will use a, a very useful characterization of AG, AG, Artinian Gornstein algebras, that they are algebras satisfying Poincaré duality, as I said in the introduction. So by standard grade, the Artinian algebra is called the Poincaré duality, Algebra, if the dimension of the last non zero graded part is one, so it's the, the field up to the, the choice of a, a generator, and the pairing given by the restriction of the multiplication map in complementary degrees is a perfect pairing. 
And in fact, it's a characterization of Gornstein algebras. Uh, AG algebra is always a Poincaré duality algebra, and vice versa. Every Poincaré duality algebra is Gornstein. Just a minute. Let me give a short proof. The idea of the proof, it's a well-known result, but I would like to recall it. So, Poincaré duality implies Gorenstein. Let A be a Poincaré duality algebra, meaning that it satisfies the Poincaré duality, this abstract version, algebraic version of the Poincaré duality. So, by definition, for any F and AK with K That is, let me call it not F, alpha, alpha here. There is beta in A, B minus K, such that alpha beta is non zero. I would like to to prove that that A is Gornstein. So the circle must be concentrated in degree D. The circle of A must be concentrated in degree D. But we know that by hypothesis, a is a point of duality, so therefore A is Gornstein. Because the circle is one dimensional. Now the converse. Gornstein implies Poincaré duality. Let A B an Artinian Gornstein algebra. We have to show the Poincaré duality. First of all, we recall that it means the dimension of the circle is one, but 
we know that AD belongs to the circle. And since this dimension is one and this is non zero, we conclude that the dimension of AD is one. It's the first part to prove that A is a Poincare duality algebra. Now we have to, we have to prove that the pairing is in fact a perfect pairing. Let us prove it by induction, by induction in K. We will prove that if alpha is in belongs to a d minus k. And alpha beta is zero for all beta in a k, then alpha is zero. The base of the induction is k equals zero. It's trivial because if alpha is an AD and beta in A zero, we can take beta equals one and it's trivial. Now, Suppose that the, the claim is true for every j less than k, and suppose that alpha belongs to k is not zero. And alpha beta is zero for all beta in a K, but there is, I'm supposing that alpha is non zero, so I suppose that there is a J. less than k such that there is a gamma in a k minus j such that alpha gamma is no zero. So that's the picture. J is less than K in D minus K, D minus J. K, sorry, D minus J. D minus J, J. Here, alpha, beta here. 
gamma here. Sorry. Gamma here. So alpha gamma belongs to A, D minus A minus J. And so by hypothesis, by induction hypothesis, there is delta in A, A minus J such that alpha gamma delta is not zero, but the degree of gamma delta is K, it's a contradiction. Therefore, the claim follows and we get that A is a Poincaré duality algebra. Let me just give you the same first example and explain the perfect pairing in this very easy example. Let me go back to the first example, which was this one. A zero, one, A one, X, Y, Z, A two, Y, Z, X, Z, X, Y, A three, X, Y, Z. This is the pairing, the perfect pairing. Of course, here is trivial. A Oh, the only non-trivial part of the pairing is this one. These products are X, Y, Z. So it's the characterization of Poincaré duality algebra that will be very useful in the sequel And we have a corollary that sometimes is one of lots of possible definitions of AG Artinian Gorenstein algebras, K algebras, as a matter of fact. Is that the functor ohm Q is a dualizing functor in the category of A modules. Corollary. Let A be an Artinian Goldstein algorithm. Then is isomorphic as an A module, this corollary will be useful in the cycle.
um, the first very important class of Gornstein algebras are the complete intersections. If we take a, a regular sequence in the polynomial ring with the same number of elements as the number of variables, it's well known that the, these complete, complete intersections are Gornstein. And the so-called degree is the sum of the degrees of the forms minus the number of forms. It's just Kozul. Complete intersections are in and Gornstein. Every monomial complete intersection is of this particular type. Monomial complete intersections. is the quotient of the ring of polynomials by the ideal generated by pure power, pure powers of every, every indeterminate. In this case, it's easy to compute the circle. And it is. LDL generated by P1 minus one, N minus one. And again, we can verify in this very easy example that the so-called degree is the sum of the degrees of the forms minus the number of forms. So let me start to recall a uh, differential version of the so-called macaulay matlis duality. macaulay matlis duality or the theory of inverse systems. Is the main tool to understand the artinian gorenstein algebras and will be our tool to link the theory of forms with vanishing hash and the classical gordon nutter theory to the left sets properties of Artin and Gorenstein algebras. There is lot of more general versions of macaulay matlis duality. But in this course, we will concentrate ourselves in the case of algebras of a field of zero characteristic, which in this case, there is some kind of a differential version of the macaulay matlis duality. And this differential version allow us to, to link the classical apolarity theory, which is completely uh, related with uh, the gordon Nutter theory. And this uh, left sets properties for AG algebras. So 
let k be a field of characteristic zero, R with a small indeterminates x1 to xn, the, the polynomial ring, and q, x1 to xn with capital X, an associated ring of differential operators, pure differential operators, in I'm thinking You, I'm gonna put X1, XN with capital letters. I'm considering XI as a partial derivative over XI. So there is a natural action of big XI in a small xj, which delta ij one if i equals j and zero if i is not equal j. It induces an action of q over r. I take a differential operator and a polynomial. Again, I'm going to have a polynomial. Moreover, if the degree of the differential operator is k and the polynomial has degree d, the degree of this guy is d minus k. So it is graded but not not increasing the grading but instead of uh, uh, it is decreasing the, the grading what's the so-called macaulay matlis macaulay matlis duality is the correspondence between ideals of Q, now I'm thinking Q as the, the, the actual ring of polynomials, the ideal of Q, and Q submodules of R. Since R is a Q module, I can think about. So, this will be the correspondence ideal of Q and Q super models of R. R, I'm thinking R as a Q model. Of course, homogeneous. And graded. The theorists also call it the theory, the theory of inverse of inverse. System and this is the natural construction of Macaulay given a M submodel U submodel of R 
I can construct the annihilator of M, which by definition is the ideal of differential forms. that annihilates, annihilates every single element of M. It, if M is a submodel, a Q submodel of R, then the annihilator of M is an ideal of Q. And it's called the annihilator. Conversely, if I, is an ideal of Q, an, an homogeneous ideal of Q, I can construct the so-called Macaulay inverse system, which is the Q submodel of R of F in R, such that alpha F equals zero for all alpha, in I. Again, it's a very easy exercise to verify that if I is a homogeneous ideal of Q, then the inverse system actually is a Q submodel of R. It's a natural one by one correspondence. almost by definition, but this bijection is very rich because if we concentrate ourselves in subsets, of special Q submodules of R, it gives rise to special ideals of Q. If here I take finite generated Q submodules, the bijection gives us I such that Q over I is a level algebra. Let me recall that the level algebra is an Artinian algebra whose focal is concentrated in the last degree D in my notation. So these finite generated Q sub models are of this type. QG1 plus QGI S. And here we are going to find level algebra of type S. What's the type? Is the dimension of the, the circle.
And if I take a Q sub model generated by a single element, I search that Q model I is Artini and Gornstein. In other words, a quotient is Artini and Gornstein if and only if I came from a single G. Let me put F just to use the same notation I have in the notes. You understand here is, is the module of differentials acting, all differentials acting over Fi and the summation. Here is Q acting on F. So what I'm saying is that if the quotient is artinian gorenstein then the ideal is the annihilator of a single form. This is the so-called the Macaulay dual generator. And this is the double annihilator Theorem of Macaulay. There is a more general version. But I'm going to be very interested in this, this second part that I prove it right now. Sir? Yes. Uh, what's the difference between uh, the F and Fi on the blackboard? What? Sorry. Well, what's the difference between the F and Fi on the blackboard? No, sorry. The Fi in the blackboard in the notation of the slides is the GI. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And F is the same F. Remember that to take uh, a submodel of a Q submodel of R to construct the ideal, we have to take the annihilator of the submodel. But if, if it's generated by a single element, it's just to take the annihilator of this element. So, Summarizing the part of the theory that matters in this course, we have the version that I'm going to prove is a little bit different. I'm not to prove the part, this part because. It's not needed in the sequel, but I'm just prove the so-called Macaulay double annihilator, annihilator theorem. Macaulay. Let A be an Artinian algebra.
a is gore este. Of circle degree. B, if and only if. There is an F in RD, a polynomial, such that I is the annihilator of this single form. So it's this ideal of differential operators that annihilates this single guy. It's just a translation of the second part of macaulay matlis theorem. And I'm going to prove it now, this version, just the second part of the theorem. So let me start the proof. Assuming that in fact, the ideal I is the annihilator of a single form F and proving that this quotient is Gorenstein. So, proof. Let's suppose that I is the annihilator of a single form F, F homogeneous polynomial of degree D. I'm going to show you that <coughs> A. U mod F is an Artinian Gorenstein algebra. Of course, it's an Artinian. Is Artinian. Because every differential operator of degree, degree E greater than D, when I let F, because F has degree D. So it's Artinian, I have to prove that it is actually Gorenstein. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna calculate the circle of A. The circle of A, by definition. Is the annihilator of the irrelevant ideal in the quotient. So it's I and over I. Now I'm in the polynomial ring Q. Mm. We are working over a field of characteristic zero. 
if f is a non-zero polynomial of degree d, we know that there is a differential operator of same degree d such that alpha applied on f is one. It's always possible to find this such a guy. And now I'm gonna show that this is y plus a alpha I'm going to show that the, the circle is one dimensional and conclude, conclude that A is Kornstein Of course, alpha lives here. The, thing, the, the first part is this part. A is enough to show that alpha belongs to this conductor, but it's easy to see. Alpha belongs here since alpha on F is one, which implies that X alpha applied in f is zero because it is x alpha f and since it's constant x y every single differential operator annihilates alpha applied in f because it's one so x alpha, therefore x alpha belongs to i for all e from i for all i from one to n, and it's okay. Now the second part. I have to show that any element beta of this conductor, let me suppose beta does not Sorry, does not annihilate I. I have to show that beta is a multiple, a, a scalar multiple of alpha. By definition, beta, xi beta of f is zero for i from one to n. What does it mean? It means that beta if is a constant. Since all the derivatives annihilate, it's a constant. But I know that alpha of if is one. So therefore, beta minus minus C alpha, if we do the computation, it annihilates F, so it belongs to the idea. And we got it.
moduli beta is a constant multiple of alpha in the quotient. So A is Gorenstein. Conversely, if A is Gorenstein, we have to find the form F, which, which is the so-called um, dual Macaulay dual generator. <clears throat> Now suppose, conversely, that A is Gorenstein. As a soul, as a corollary of the Poincaré duality, Poincaré duality description, the, the, the We know that we got this isomorphism. But it's, it's also not so difficult to show that home of Q can be identified with the formal power series. And now I'm gonna put a small X. This short exact sequence the home functor give rise to an exact sequence zero. Let me. Sorry. Here, this guy is isomorphic to A, and this guy is isomorphic to the ring of formal power series X1, Xn. And then this. guy is my F. A priori, by definition, F is not a polynomial, it's only a power series. But in fact, we can prove using that high, an, enough higher order differential operators annihilates F, which implies that F in fact is a polynomial, and moreover, it's very easy to conclude after that, that the annihilator of F is exactly 
y, and it concludes the proof. Mm. <clears throat> let me see let me show you just two very very easy examples in general it's a little bit hard i i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you something about the the easy and the hard part of macaulay matley's duality First, um, very easy example, given a single form, it's easy to compute the annihilator. The annihilator is the, uh, is the ideal, generated, let, let, me, let me put this, Easy example. Of my type. F X one D X N D. The differential operators in R D. The differential operators that annihilate. F is the ideal generated by X, Y, X, J. Y difference in J. And X, Y, D minus X, J, D. If I different J. It's very easy to see that these crossed products of variables annihilates F as differential operators. And also, if just to explain this, X, Y, D of F is diffatorial, which the same X, J, D of F. So the difference annihilates F. The Hilbert function of A, it's very easy to compute. It's one, sorry, it's not N plus one. I, I have some problems with notation because some lecture is in the projective space. So I have N plus one, but others is from, one to n, in this case, the Hilbert function is one, n, 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 one. Length the And every graded part is written just there. So given f, It's easy to compute the ideal 
annihilator of f. On the contrary, in general, given i, which I know that's the annihilator of some f, to find f is difficult. But in some cases, it's also easy. In the monomial case, for instance, we know that any complete intersection is going to stink. So the question is, is what is the dual generator, the Macaulay dual generator? And it, it's exactly this one. If you compute the annihilator of this guy, it's just the ideal i. These are two very easy examples. But in general, it's a very difficult open problem. find the Macaulay dual generator. Let me say, for instance, in the case of complete intersections, just to start, Given an Artinian complete intersection together with a presentation of Q, how to find the Macaulay dual generator? It's a, it's a tough question. A very special case is the following one. Let X to be a smooth project, projective hypersurface. And take the Jacobian ideal generated by the partial derivatives. By the regularity, by the smooth smoothness of the hypersurface, we got the regularity of the, 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 the sequence. It's a, it's a regular sequence. <clears throat> so it's a, a complete inter intersection. How do we find the Macaulay dual generator? This problem is open. It was solved only for cubics with n less than or equal five. Finally, we are now in position to define the so-called left sets properties. Let A be any Artinian graded K algebra. Uh, we say that A has the double LP weak left sets property. If there is some element in degree one, such that the multiplication map from AI to AI plus one has maximum rank for all I from zero to D minus one. We say that the algebra A have the SLP strong left sets property. If there is a linear element such that all the multiplication maps of powers of L from AI to AI plus K has maximum rank. And we say that A has the strong left sets property in the narrow sense, if there is an 
linear elements such that the multiplication map in complementary degrees is in fact an isomorphism. This version is the is the analogous of the hard left set theorem for cohomology of complex projective varieties. In the, in the case of standard grade Artin and Gorenstein algebras, SLP and SLP in the narrow sense are equivalent. Uh, the, the pointer, the pointer, uh, moreover, double P in the case of standard grade Artin and Gornstein algebra should be verified only in the middle. Is enough to, to, to verify double P in the middle. So SLP in complementary degrees, double P in the middle. What is known in general, every quadrant dimension two is standard grade Artinian algebra. I'm not saying Gornstein, every Artinian has the SLP. In co-dimension up to three, there are examples failing double P. In co-dimension from four, there are examples failing double P. Artini and Gorenstein, complete intersections in co-dimension three have the double P. This is what's known. It's open. It's true or, or, or false that every cold dimension three AG algebra have the SLP or the WLP. Let us translate using Macaulay Matlis duality this problem. We are asking for the left set's property for algebras of this type. Co-dimension three, three variables. Let me put over C just to simplify. It's open over C, which is my favorite case. So F defines a curve in the projective plane, a degree D curve. Let's assume that F is a reduced, uh, a reduced uh, polynomial. So it's a degree D, D, degree D curve. That's the precise open question. We said we 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 saw that the the, the monomial uh, the monomial Artinian complete intersection are easy to treat, and in fact. They are easy also to, 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 to show to have the SLP because uh, they can be, they can, 
be presented as the tensor product of the cohomology of P1, of P, of projective spaces. And we know that the projective space The, the segre the segre product of the the projective space is a smooth complex projective right so using the hard left side theorem over C we know that the algebra has the SLP there are lots of different proofs of this result. Uh, in the next lecture, I'm going to give an easy proof for some special cases. Mm, it doesn't work. Ah. As I said, our AG algebras are like a model natural model for cohomology. Open question. Is it true or false that all complete intersections have the SLP? We, we saw that monomial, monomial, uh, complete intersections actually have the SLP, but we don't know in general. A special case, as I said, is the case of Milner algebras. So it's a complete intersection where the ideal is, is the Jacobian ideal of a smooth, complex project, hypersurface. Uh, we proved for cube surface and just last year uh, was proved by cubic three folds and it's open in general, even for cubics. So if one you stay with a very precise in particular, open problem in mind, this one should be another interesting open problem to have in mind. Let x be of f. Uh, one can re reduce to the case of irreducible cubics. Irreducible, smooth, cubic, hypersurface. And J. The Jacobian ideal. The Milner algebra of F is this. The question is thus. The Milner algebra has SLP or double P. Too very precise and particular, but interesting enough uh, open problems so far.
this is this digital computer. Let me see if I have time to say something about the minimal minimal Hilbert vectors. Yes, do I have half an hour? So let me say something about minimal Hilbert vectors. That was one of my first questions in this lecture. Let me say something about it. In so-called degree three, the problem doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to consider so-called degree D greater than or equals four. So let me start with D equals four. Stanley showed that this 1, 13, 12, 13, 1 is a Gornstein. Gornstein. Hilbert function. What does it mean? It means that there is actually an, a, a, an AG algebra whose of co-dimension 13 and so-called degree four, whose Hilbert vector is exactly this one. So by macaulay matlis duality, there is some polynomial. What polynomial? Let me say that the polynomial is F in the x1, x10, sorry, small x, u, v, w. Degree four, degree four, f, will be of the xi gi i from 1 to 10 and gi the gi is a basis of c U, V, W, degree three. Degree three with three variables. The dimension is two plus three, choose two, which is absolutely 10. So we can take a, a, a monomial, a standard mon monomial basis. It's okay. If I compute this algebra, then this vector is the Hilbert factor of this algebra. It's the first example of a non unimodal. Hilbert function. You see, it has a valley.
So if we want to understand minimal Hilberg, Hilberg factors, we are going to deal with non-unimodal non-unimodal uh, uh, vectors. I don't know if the pointer is still working. Yes, it is. Let me postpone just a little bit. I, I'm, I go back. Mm. No. Sorry. Minimal Hilbert vectors. So uh, it was proven that this vector is minimal. And moreover, it's the first time that a known unimodal Hilbert vector occurs. What I'm saying? I'm saying that if facts, facts, if the codimension n is less than e equal, 12 and D equals four. Hill A is unimodal. And the minimum is one and 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 one that actually exists. It's like a you can think in the firma. Firma has this this firma Hilbert function. In particular, 1, 12, 11, 12, 1 is not a Gorenstein. Minimal. Gorenstein. One, 13, 12, 13, 1 is minimal. I want to pose, propose some conjecture about minimal Gorenstein Hilbert functions. And to um, explain the, the tools that we are using to prove uh, particular cases of this conjecture. Let me introduce the high binomial expansion of a number. For instance, the three binomial expansion of 13 is, I take something, choose three, it should be four, but it's, it's not high enough. Five, yes, five choose three is 10, which is less than 13, it's okay. If I put six here, I could six choose three, is greater than 13, it doesn't fit. So 10, three, oops. 
two, two, three. This is the third binomial expansion of 13. And uh, it exists and is unique. And there are some classical bounds for the Hilbert functions, which were given by Macaulay and Green. Macaulay proved that the an upper bound for the degree d plus one d is not the 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 the, the, the so-called degree anymore. We are in a standard graded uh, Artin and algebra arbitrary and uh, and if we take the quotient by a general linear form we have this bound green inequality and i'm going to use it to show that this vector is minimal just to explain the tools that we are using to attack the conjecture that are proposed at the end of this lecture. Suppose on the contrary, that one, 13, 11, 13, one is Gorenstein. If it is Gorenstein, and I take L, a general linear form, I can use the short exact sequence with the conductor. So it's the Hilbert function of R model I, R model I L R I L. So since it's Gorenstein, it's the annihilator of some polynomial F. This guy is the annihilator of the derivative of F with, with respect to L. So it has a form one A A I. And the quotient of this guy by L, 0, 1, 12, something, something. By Green theorem, this degree 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This degree 3 entry gives a bound to the this degree three entry. H prime degree three is less than or equal to the three binomial expansion of H three minus one in the upper part of the binomial zero. Since I compute the third binomial expansion of 13, it's going to be 4 plus 3 plus 2 choose 2. 4, 1, 5. The worst case is 5. Let me put 5 here. So eight, eight, three. By Macaulay theorem, since zero, one, two, 
3 since h prime 2 equals 3 h prime 3 is less than or equal to the h prime 2 second binomial expansion plus one plus one let me give you the second binomial expansion of three which is actually three choose two plus one plus one it's four choose three which is four so one side one side it's five but it should be less than or equal to four it's a contradiction so one 13 11 13 one is not a garnish thing hilbert vector How to, how to generalize these ideas? Um. In the same way, I have to choose a bunch of u variables that in this case, I choose three u variables, u, v, and w, and find the dimension of degree d minus one in m, m variables, which is the binomial m plus d minus two, choose d minus one, and define the so-called full Parazzo polynomial of type m, type m and degree d, and we define the full Parazzo algebra, and we have the conjecture that the Hilbert vector of a full Parazzo algebra of type M and so called degree D is minimal in the family of Artini and Gorenstein algebras of co-dimension, the correct co-dimension, which is the number of U variables plus the number of X variables, and there is a bisection between the X variables and the degree D minus one monomials. So it is binomial number. And in fact, we have just proved the conjecture to the case D equals four, M equals three, but as a matter of fact, we prove it in each d greater than or equals four, that for m equals three, the conjecture is true. And several other particular cases in low degree, I still have 15 minutes. Let me just give you some some results and some re references about the references the first reference is the bible is the book about martinian gorenstein algebras and lefschetz property the second reference mayan watanabe it's a very short paper that recalls lots of the ideas that are presented in this, in this uh, lecture. The third reference is Russo's book in the chapter seven, um, there is a discussion about uh, Hessian and Lefschetz properties. Dinka, myself, and Lard, uh, we proved some part of the 
SLP for cubics. This second paper in this page uh, proves that every Artinian algebra of codimension two has the SLP and the complete intersections of codimension three have the WLP. Bricali for Valle Pirola proved that the um, Milner algebra of a smooth threefold of degree three in P4 has the SLP. Bernstein and Robino studied non unimodal algebras. Boys also known unimodality, unimodality, also known unimodality. This last paper proved this case that I just put you here 1, 13, 12, 13. Stanley, known unimodal Gorenstein is optimal. And it, 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 this one is a preprint, Bezerra, Gondin, Ilard, Zapala is a preprint where we put the conjecture. Let me just finish the lecture addressing the known cases of the conjecture. The conjecture is that Ah. Conjecture. If F. is tau m, the dimension, degree d, u1, un, degree d minus one, m minus one, d minus one, d minus one, mm, a is q, mother, the annihilator of F, circle degree D, full dimension M plus tau M, here, yeah, is minimal. In AG M plus tau M D is a minimal Hilbert vector in the family of algebras of given circle degree and uh, so in low. So called degree, so called degree four, so called degree four, No cases of the conjecture. D equals four. M 
three, four. Three is the case of Stanley Hibbert vector that was done by Migliore and Zanello. Four, five, six, seven. B equals five, three, or five. D arbitrary, M equals three. That's it. So in this lecture, we presented three huge open problems. And this last one, a precise conjecture that we are working on that, on that. and it has some partial results. Thank you. And tomorrow I'm going to link the first lecture about Hessians with the theory of artinian gorstein algebras and introduce higher order Hessians to, um, to give some kind of uh, higher order gordon utter theory. Uh, okay, if you have any questions, I'm here. If not, thank you.